Hey everyone, this is PowerPal 14 coming at you again with another review. This time we are reviewing Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Check it out right here. We start you off in the menu system. This game has a really unique uh, enemy evolution system, as I call it. As we go to Sauron's army right here, they have this whole system based on uh, um, various different timed elements, timed events, and if you die. So these are all the captains. You know, uh, right here. These first row right here is, these are the noob captains. These are the ones that just killed you will be promoted automatically to captain. This is where they're going these slots. These are the noobs. Novice and, and some experienced. I said the evolution of the system is fantastic. You know, you have timed events, which if that work beats their timed event, they'll get a power upgrade and potentially, you know, get a promotion upgrade. And if they kill you, they get a higher, you know, if, they, if they're not already a captain, then they get a promotion upgrade as well. All right off the bat. So these are all the noob captains. Now, here's our more experienced captains. These are the veteran and experienced captains. And sometimes you get like an elite captain in there as well. Um, the reason that blue one is legendary is because he is my captain. I branded him and he, uh, he gets, um, he's been doing a lot of timed events. So he gets really powered up. You can check him out right here. So I, I can send people that I've branded you know, or he can go and try and kill a war chief. He can go and kill someone else. He can try and become a war chief's bodyguard. You know, so I can, uh, I can have him do a lot of things. These up here, like the veteran elite captains, that third tier row. Those are the elite veteran captains, man. Those think those guys are badass. So just check them out here. And as I'm scrolling through the war chiefs, you see those lines. Those are the um, those lines to me indicate that those chiefs have bodyguards. Now, when you fight the war chief, those those captains will come with him, and you have to fight them all at once. Unless you kill them beforehand or brand them, you can turn them over on the chief in combat. So it's there's a lot of cool different ways you can infiltrate and and organize the army and destroy it. Now we're going into weapons here. Now, as you can see, these are all my weapons. I fully upgraded them as I have flattened the game. So these are all fully upgraded. This is the uh, stat page right there. You can see the stats up upper right hand corner. And these are the um, runes. Pretty much, uh, you know, pretty simple. You collect runes by killing captains and war chiefs, and then you know, if you kill them using certain techniques like their weakness will give you a higher level rune if you kill them and they're a war chief and they've already killed you it gives you more points as you can check out the sword here i'm going to let you see it fully upgraded yeah i, lo I really love in the game how you start off and the weapons are like really crap and then they reforge them as you go through the game that's the fully reforged sword now we go over to the bow here and uh, again pretty simple. The hardest trophy that's going to give you a problem in this game has to be the level 25 rune. Because you have to kill a war chief who's already killed you with his intelligence. You have to know his weaknesses and you have to um, exploit either a hate or a fear. And when they get up that high, and plus, oh, plus they have to be level 20 in power. But when they get up that high it's, most of them lose their hate or fears. So you have to keep getting one up till he gets it. I'm going to show you the dagger here. I really love the dagger. You can see an elven script below the uh, fuller. Really, really nice. Now here's the um, upgrades page. You know, they split the upgrades into wraith powers and ranger powers. I tended on the first playthrough, or on my uh, beginning of the game, to go with ranger a little more. And I don't regret that, because um, I went with Wraith when I had to and when it was suiting me, and eventually I got them all. So uh, that ability I just clicked on, that was definitely uh, a needed, a need one. That ability to uh, jump over the enemies and stun them—that is definitely. I highly suggest you get that. 
he's just a couple of the really cool ones. Like I said, all those Grog Hunters and Cargoror Hunters and all that, that's story. A lot of them are stories, so don't be going and buying stuff and it won't let you. Here we are at the attributes, and this is pretty much, you know, the left side increases health, focus, and arrows, and the right side just increases uh, rune slots. And the bottom, the bottom three there give you, like, supercharge. These are, um, you know, it's progression, progression, collectibles, all that good stuff. As you can see, I got them all. Now, this is the appendices. Um, let's just go through here and see these. I'll let you listen to the poem now. Alright, so now we're out of there. And you know, these are pretty much just, uh, again, collectibles that I've gotten, you know, artifacts, all that cool stuff. These are some cool screenshots, which I, you know, I really like. I think they all look really cool. Legendary Grog, that was awesome. I really liked that one. That was an like, awesome fight. I mean, the stories, the story in this game is pretty awesome. Had a lot of cool fights. You know, just, just scrolling through a couple of the pictures here. So it's, I really recommend this game. It's a real fun blast to play. So here's a couple of the flowers, you know, the standard stuff. Yeah, so this is just like collectibles. And now here we got the uh, people information about people and then you got you know lore and and all this good stuff and the artifacts visions you know all, all the good stuff that comes with their game tutorials and we're gonna go into on um, some live gameplay at this point in the game I just platinumed it so I am fully upgraded with all my abilities at this point I just use shadow mount to mount that cargo roar or Karagor, as they call it in the Middle Earth. So the Karagor is pretty much the agilist, uh, you know, the most agile creature in the game. You can ride a lot better than riding the Grog. See here, it's uh, biting them off, biting their heads off, and all that good stuff. Which also heals the Karagor. As you can notice on the left side, that half health bar is the Karagor, it's not mine. So, uh, yeah, you, you bite to, you bite to be heal with the cargo. Now the cargo is like I said, pretty more agile. You can jump over most, uh, most features, rocks, stones, walls. Uh, as we go to enemies here, uh, like I said, you can shoot the ball off the cargo, which I'll just demonstrate in a second. And, uh, here, I'll demonstrate right here. There you go. Let's see. Bow shot to the head. As also with any mount, you can uh, drain them, costing a little health, but you can refill as you see your arrows there to a, a certain limit. You know, like a yeah, drain will give you like half arrows back. But it's nice in a tight uh, situation. So again, you can, you know, like. For example, fire off and set off traps off the cargo and all that good stuff. Watch out! The cargo is great for also, you know, taking out those captains with fear of the hard and, and we'll run you the, uh, and drip with the hate of cargo. There's a captain right there. I will well just kill him now. So, in, in Shadow War, there's a couple different enemy types. You have the shield guy, which you see all the way up behind you there. You have the Berserker. 
two weapons that I just kill a flurry kill. Uh, his head exploded because that is a perk that uh, makes them explode when you kill them with a flurry kill. But, uh, and, you know, you got some enemies like this guy right here, those are randoms, you know, just regular soldiers. And then you have the smaller versions of those, and those are like, regular orc soldiers. And that guy just threw the spear at me right there, he is a hunter. Those guys are the bane of card wars and brawls, man. Those guys do like double damage. They're, they're hunting me. It, it, it's nasty. So if you're on a grog, that's the enemy you gotta watch out for. Execution. The executions in this game are fantastic. Besides the um, hunter, the last one is the bowman, which you unfortunately do not see here. But uh, the bowman is pretty easy. Right there was the. Uh, Double du double duck, or not, uh, not the double duck, the uh, double counter. And um, like I said, if you have two enemies stack you at one time, you can press tri triangle twice. Oh, yeah, that was nice. And uh, block both attempts. That right there, you can see the room right there. It's real nice. Uh, killing captains and war chiefs also drops off. Uh, like I said before, runes. Depending on how you kill them and how well you kill them, you know, if you use their weakness or not. Oh, how was nice. So, I mean, a lot of people quote this game for being ripped off from Assassin's Creed. I, I agree. I think the stealth aspects are way too similar to be a coincidence. But uh, I don't mind it because I think Assassin's Creed is awesome, but at the, uh, at the same time, it's way too familiar. If there's a, there, there could be a loss. Right? I, would, I would understand a loss, but that's how similar. It is. But if you take, if you take that, and if you use all the elements, it makes it feel like Shadow of War. So if you use the wraith abilities and the ranger abilities together, if you use the, uh, like I've been doing here, I've been using you know, the uh, duck ability, and right there I use the dodge ability. And, I'll show you branding here in a second, but uh, if you use all those abilities together, then it feels. Like it's but stealth-wise, it feels pretty much exactly like that. And I just like right there. That's the branding. It's the combat brand will come to uh, now he'll serve me in the fight. Ooh, that's nasty. This game has some really impressive finishing moves, man. Really fast. Very good. Nice decapitations. So, like I said, I, I think this game is great. I think it's definitely well deserved of credit. I do not think it's worth 45. Right here, I'm showing the pin in place ability, which holds enemies in place. You know, useful for trying to uh, catch up to fleeing captains. And, um, no, like I say, I think it's a great game. I don't think it's worth $60. I think it's worth 45 uh, the trophies are awesome. It's a great platform. It's actually a good Lord of the Rings game. So I would give it an 8. Definitely pick it up uh, when you can, but don't rush it. Alright, guys. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you all later.